Hi, I would like to show a few chemistry experiments for you because I studied chemistry and uh, okay, no, I'm in the wrong place for that. Uh, no, not in the wrong place with the wrong crowd, I guess. But I'm missing the periodic table of elements here. Um, still, uh, I will talk about OpenStreetMap stuff, of course, uh, and about my demo I put together uh, called VRMap that uses OpenStreetMap data in a web VR environment. Uh, the slides are already up if uh, any of you want to go to them. Uh, they're, right now, they're the first piece up on slides.cairo.at. For the past, uh, you can use the full, uh, for future, you can use the full URL here. Short thing for me, I'm Robert Kaiser. Uh, my nickname in a lot of web places is Cairo. Uh, that's also my username on OpenStreetMap. I've been uh, a mapper since, I think, 2007, I saw on my profile. Um, my email and, and website are, are up there. I'm a Mozilla tech speaker. This is the tech speaker's logo in case you wonder what I'm wearing here. Um, uh, I'm a volunteer for Mozilla who goes to conferences and talks about web technologies. I'm based in Vienna, in Austria, and I'm not on most social networks if you look for me, but I am on a few smaller ones, uh, including Telegram, which we're using uh, here for some of the communication as well. Uh, look to the slides if you want links. So what uh, do we want to get from this talk? For one thing, I want to show you the cross-device nature of WebVR or WebXR, the ease of use of the A-frame library or framework, whatever you call it, and the ability to use OpenStreetMap data in, in an environment like that and how to use it. So first, I said WebVR or in WebXR, what do those words mean? WebVR is web reality powered by web technologies, which uh, a lot of people may have seen virtual reality devices like the Oculus Go or HTC Vive or, or different uh, headsets or even those phone mounted things like Gear VR or, or uh, Google Cardboard or things like that you can actually power uh, those with web technologies. Uh, it's evolving right now into the web XR device API, where XR means mixed reality, or some call it extended reality, uh, basically virtual and augmented reality put, put together uh, into one standard because they're very similar in terms of what you need in technology. It's a proposed open standard in concert with WebGL, which some of you may have heard of, Web Audio and GamePad APIs. Uh, and in terms of browser support, we have support in Firefox release on, on PC, on Windows and Mac. Linux is in development, mostly because the drivers for the headsets are pretty shaky on uh, Linux still. Uh, and then there are some graphics patches for Firefox that are still needed. Chrome has some experimental support in development versions that you can turn on with a flag and standalone headsets like uh, the Oculus browser here in, in this headset or Firefox Reality, which is a browser for uh, standalone headsets or Samsung Internet uh, and um, on the HoloLens, uh, the version of Edge that is on there. Those have support for WebVR as well. So, it is actually supported for multiple browsers. On the PC, for the PC connected uh, headsets, it's pretty much Firefox only right now, though Chrome seems to be working on it. So one thing I would be interested in is who of you is, uh, has been developing any code? Uh, or who has not? Uh, of those who, who have, uh, have not, uh, who has not done any HTML editing? One. Okay. So everybody has at least seen uh, how a HTML document uh, works, and that will be very helpful. Um, because uh, we will come back to that when I get to, the, uh, to how this is built. A demo. Uh, web VR map 
is, as I said, using WebVR with live OpenStreetMap data from the Overpass API. We will see a little bit from, uh, of that as well. It's usable in 2D mode on any modern browser. So you can open it uh, on your phone, your uh, PC, in Firefox, in Chrome, in Edge, whatever, uh, in any modern browser, and you will uh, see a 2D uh, window into the 3D world. But if you have a headset and controllers, you can fully immerse yourself uh, into the, the VR experience with those. It's using the A-frame framework. I will come to, back to that later. And it's pretty simple. It's about HT, uh, 80 lines of HTML, most of which are actually the uh, intro dialogue and then a little bit of very important code that set up, sets up the scene and about 600 lines of JavaScript, which, which is not too much, because uh, uh, some of that is very simple selectors on how I estimate, for example, building heights. And some calculations to transform coordinates, which if you have worked with OpenStreetMap data in some way, uh, or map data in some way, you know that coordinate translations are something you need quite a bit. So let's go into the demo right away. When you open it, uh, it up first and you saw the URL, you can call it up yourself if you want to. It's on vrmap.cairo.at. Um, so if you go into it at first, you will get this introduction dialog where you can uh, select a few scenes here. Uh, it starts in front of the building I live in. So uh, unfortunately, you know how, where I live. but. The, on the other hand, I uh, run a business and I need to publish my address for that anyhow, so uh, it doesn't change a lot. So um, you can load a few things here. I did not add Heidelberg here. Uh, I did not get to that. Um, but say I want to load New York. Say load location, it loads up uh, New York and then uh, I can see it in 2D mode here. I can use the W uh, ESD keys to f go or fly around in the scene. And if trees are in there with, in OpenStreetMap with a pretty good uh, data set, you actually see different heights and uh, sizes of, of trees, even different kinds of trees. If we have needle-leafed and broad-leafed trees, um, and different building heights, uh, as you see here. This is the scene from where I live. As we saw in, in New York, you actually have uh, some building colors where OpenStreetMap has colors on the buildings. Uh, on the ground, you have uh, the mapnik layer to, for additional orientation. And there's also some limits to this. Uh, you may have seen par Paris here. If I turn around here, you may see some limitation of how I render stuff. I hope it's, it actually did load this, or did it not? Mm, I seem to not have the thing that I wanted, which is bad. It should be over there somewhere. It should have the Eiffel Tower here. Oh, it did not load buildings. Uh, let, let me try and reload it. Because um, I think we should have the time for that. Because I did not see any buildings, I only saw trees. Yeah, now we got it. Um, you will see one limitation that, that I have in there, uh, and that's that. That is the Eiffel Tower. Um, <laughs> Not exactly how you know it, but the only thing I'm doing there is I take uh, the area on the ground and extrude it to, uh, to some height. And of course, that doesn't give me the form of the Eiffel Tower. Uh, the color is right, though. <laughs> OK, so now that we've seen a little bit of it, uh, let's see uh, what I did there. So for one thing, and that's especially interesting in this crowd, I assume that the world is flat. And actually, in two ways, there's no curvature to the Earth, and there's also no hills and valleys. But before the uh, 
flat earth supporters ritual is too much, I actually had to respect uh, where you are on earth because the, the tiles of, in Mercator projection are different sizes uh, depending on how far north or south you are. And I actually have to respect that to get the correct size in the environment. The units in the VR environment in, in A-frame are meters. So I need to get the correct size of the tiles in meters. Uh, and as I said before, I'm using the, the Mapnik uh, tiles via a tile cache. So I'm actually using the official uh, uh, OpenStreetMap uh, rendered tiles, but via a tile cache that I operate myself to not get too much load on the OpenStreetMap servers. Um, and then I have, as you saw, trees and buildings in there uh, from the overpass API. What VR also needs is a camera and co controller setup that uh, allows you to see your, your controllers in the right shape uh, as you, you have them uh, and to be able to move in, in uh, multiple ways in the scene. And as I said before, it's built with the A-Frame library, which was originally created by Mozilla. It has now been taken over by the community. And that A-Frame library makes it really easy to build something. So uh, that's actually one thing I forgot to preload. Did it, um, OK, no, 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 no. Did it load it here? Yeah. So um, just wanted this loaded. So I have the code here for a very simple uh, a frame preview, and that's this scene, which is just a sphere, a, a rotating uh, cube, a cylinder, and the and the um, plane on uh, on the bottom. The code for that looks like that. Uh, it's it's very simple. Uh, to understand even if you only know HTML. It's not the official HTML tags, it's some modified tags. So you have an a scene tag, which means your scene is uh, inside this. And the sphere is just a sphere tag, the cube, a cube tag. This is an earlier example for a frame 0.8. The, the newer versions have animation uh, as an attribute uh, and not a tag inside a tag, but it works pretty similarly. Uh, cylinder, you see the plane, the sky is basically a, a sphere around you that you, you view from the inside. So you can, you just need some HTML tags and you can get to something. Um, as I'm running a little bit short on time, I will not go into uh, a lot of the code details. Um, there's one HTML uh, file with the basic scene and the, all the includes and start dialog. And then there's uh, some JavaScript files. The most interesting ones there are the uh, tiles, trees, and buildings that load the actual uh, objects. And most interesting of that, the trees and buildings. Uh, that's up on GitHub. So, um, I want to take one look into the buildings because uh, for OpenStreetMap, there's one interesting thing there, and that is how do I get to the height of buildings? Uh, and you see some variables I put there to actually estimate the height if there's no height tag on the buildings. And so I use the levels, and that's the first variable you see there that I'm estimating three meters per building levels. So if there's not a height tag, I look at the levels. If that's not there as well, then I go to, down to defaults based on the building equals something. And if that's also not there, then uh, I go to so just some standard height, which I think is 10 meters. Um, Unless the building is very small, then I have some heuristic that I don't want to go into because that's a little bit more difficult to uh, talk about. So basically, if you have done any JavaScript, um, 
So this is the, uh, the height calculation. Um, if you have done JavaScript, you know th things like that. That's how I'm creating the element for the building. The A entity is more or less what the div element is in HTML uh, here, so it's a generic container thing. I'm giving a, a class just uh, for myself, for uh, being able to take care of those. Uh, and then I'm actually accessing the underlying 3.js library to build the geometry there, because buildings have pretty uh, different geometry uh, based on their data, and I need to, uh, to deal with that. Uh, that's actually not done, done here. That, uh, it's, it's done in the re uh, register de geometry. Um, the code for someone who has done JavaScript stuff, the code should be uh, pretty uh, easy understandable, I hope. If it's not, please ask me. So to recap, um, we've seen how those technologies, WebVR, uh, WebXR, can be used on different devices. You may have loaded on uh, this demo on your mobile phone. You saw that it worked there. You saw the 2D version there. For my talk, you have to believe me that it works in here. But uh, afterwards or outside, you can actually uh, try it out yourself in uh, the Oculus Go headset. Ease of use of A-frame, you saw that you can use HTML tags. You can then attach JavaScript to those. You can, of course, also build those tags up with JavaScript. And OpenStreetMap data, you saw it used. Uh, please look at the code or, or ask me for, for details on how. You will see the very simple overpass queries that I'm using. Um, I just wanted to, to get to the end here and uh, just see if you uh, get to this slide, because I really want you to take the code and try to use it for your own ideas. There's two examples here. Uh, someone who tried to load uh, models that are linked in OpenStreetMap uh, and get positioning info on how to position it exa uh, exactly in the map. That's the Tune 3D MR. And the OSM Rail is someone who built a uh, environment where you can ride a train through the virtual environment, basically. And that brings me to the uh, end of the talk itself. Um, I will jump to one thing in the, in the code here, because I mentioned it. And uh, here, I think it's a good idea to do this. And that's, what's that in? No, in buildings, I only build it. No, here it is. I was in the right file anyhow. So this is how I'm, I'm building up the, the overpass query. So way uh, that has a building tag on it, relation that has a building tag on it, both with the bounding box, then out body, resolve it, out scale QT. That's, uh, you have to look at the overpass documentation for the details, but that's, that's what I'm using here. And then I convert to GeoJSON, but we don't go into that in detail right now. So that, that's it. Um, let's get back to this slide. Do we have time for questions? We do. We do okay. have a couple minutes for so questions here. So if there's any here. questions, please feel free to ask. Uh, great presentation. I was just curious, um, with the roads layers, it seems like most of it is still 2D, still pretty planar. Do you have um, any functionality with dealing with the layer tags, so having roads underneath or bridges at all, demonstrating that through the, uh, the VR? Uh, I did not put any code for this in, into it, mm -hmm. but it's possible. Yeah. You could also load some uh, model of the terrain and then use that information, but then you need to respect the height information to 
put the buildings in different heights and so on, because it doesn't know physics-wise where the building lands. So that's why I assumed everything is flat to make it easier to code this. Mm -hmm. But uh, it would be interesting to try and use a terrain model and then get heights and get bridges and whatever in there. Mm -hmm. uh, I just went with the most simple thing that I, I could also demo on, uh, right. on a session like yeah. this. <laughs> Thanks. And you, uh, while the microphone is going around, you can load uh, 3D models. So you could load a pre-created terrain model, for example. Mm. What information could you, is worth adding to the map to make make this uh, virtual reality models better? So what I found here was that it already helped quite a lot when I went around in my area and mapped how many levels the buildings have, because that gives you a more realistic picture of how, uh, uh, what the height of the buildings is. Of course, exact height of buildings would be even better. Uh, which sometimes is available from open government data, but not, not everywhere. And when you're going through the street yourself, building levels is much easier than to find out how high this building is, right? So uh, all those things that, that make it easier to get the height of objects uh, is really the biggest missing piece that I see right now. Because we have pretty good information when it comes to do 2D, but the one-third dimension is already, it would already be a big step to get some information there. And that's missing in a lot of cases. One last question. If there's none, uh, Feel free to come up to me. Uh, I can sh you can view it in, in, the in the device and call it up yourself. Uh, try to play with the code. I'm really happy if people make something out of it. <laughs> <laughs>